Well, hi right guys again. This is the latest update on my four stroke TT Nitro. Now, in the last one, I had it running um, and I hadn't actually taken it out. And I was trying to set up the gearbox and stuff like that. Now, the bodywork on it is the old bodywork, um, which I managed to get all the black paint off and it was red underneath. But it's it damaged a lot, but it'll be alright for a bash up. Um, I got Luckily, I've got some new bodywork of Gregor, as usual, it comes up Trump, saying this is pretty rare to find now, so I've got some new bodywork, I'll cut out, uh, I managed to fit the front mudguard yesterday, absolute nightmare, because if you remember on the original TT, it had like the old fashioned forks, so the, this my God, just sort of stuck on the forks with double-sided tape. Well, I've got to make this one go up and down. If, if you can see that, it's got to go up and down with the suspension. So it's got to come off the bottom bracket. So, you know, that took me a long while to work out, but I've got that working now. So uh, I'll get that painted. Obviously, I've got all the decals for this. The only thing I've noticed, if you can see along the bottom here, mine's a lot sort of shorter. I've gone along the cut line, but it's slightly different body. It kind of looks all right everywhere else. Uh, it's got a few weird kind of markings on the front here, like something's moved and a moulding, but you know, I'm not too fussed. Once it's painted up, uh, it's got some black on it and whatever, you know, stuff like that. Now this is the other thing, which is, you know, like people say it's like Marmite, you either love it or you hate it. Uh, I'll put this on. This is the rear hugger. You know, and it, it goes in there. Now, you know, I sort of quite like it, really, but everyone I've shown it to, they don't like it. They hate it and just keep saying to me, take it off. So I might paint it all up. You know, you've got the Bridgestone sticker on there and that, that, what I should do and, you know, see what see what it looks like, you know. Uh, I'm not too fast. I don't mind it, but I was lucky getting the bodywork because, you know, the price of some of these... CT bikes is going through the roof at the moment. Whether they're selling or not, I don't know. But you know, you've got to pay over five hundred pound now just for a, you know a bit of a wreck of a two-stroke. You know, with the dodgy tyres on them, and you know, um, it's the you know the original tyres on this bike are just like the plastic. You know, and um, I don't think people had a lot of luck with it. I don't think the body is that strong, um, and the wheels and, and stuff like that. But anyway. The, the price for them is ridiculous. So getting any parts for them, you know, I mean, the guy wanted like over a hundred pounds for um, a fuel tank and the silencer here, you know, someone wanted like over 80 quid for one of those. I, I just can't believe it. It's always the same, like Greg says, when a bike's discontinued, the parts of it just go through the roof, you know. And, you know, this one's pretty special because it's got a four stroke in it, although, I don't know if I'm going to sell it or not, but we'll see how it goes. Now, I got it running um, and I was really pleased with it. It was going really well, but it wouldn't change gear. No matter what I did, it would not change gear. Handled lovely, quite crisp on the engine, you know, stuff like that. And I just could not get it to change gear. And then I had a lot of some instructions of, this is out of a Kyosho car. Uh, I don't know if you can see in there, you might be able to, where are we? Now, there we go. This this gearbox, that is out of a Kyosho Pure 10 Spider. Um, I'll change the gear and try and get some tall gears on it, you know, and, you know, I think the gear ratios were going to be okay. Well, you know, it was pulled away quite hard and, you know, it was going, but it would not change gear. So... When I'd looked at the instructions of the Kyosho Spider, which was a similar sort of gearbox, I noticed that the rotation of the clutch was a different way round. Now, the clutch goes anti-clockwise. Now, so the actual main shaft goes clockwise, which is correct for what I need. But the, because the gears are round the other way, it meant I noticed that the one-way bearing was round the other way, which is okay, which works okay. But then I started thinking, well, I wonder if the actual pull, you know, it's like a little pull that flies out and it grips on the side. There's like a little piece of like um, steel, like a little dowel. And as the revs increase, this flies out, engages in that um, like little spigot, 
and then it takes over and because it's on a one-way bearer and it free wheels the other gear and it takes over into the second gear now I kept looking at it and taking it apart and things and I was actually looking at it the wrong way I was thinking that the pull comes out and engages into the spigot which is sort of partly true but what was happening is it's got to sort of be around the other way so the actual gear engages on the spigot if that makes sense so what it's got to do is when it flies out the, the second gear is a driven gear so that's spinning all the time so this pull has to be around the other way so it's still going to fly out but it has to fly out and then the gear comes round and then it's got to catch on that the spigot in the second gear the pull comes out catches on that and then that takes over the drive from first gear now once i saw that i thought that's around the wrong way because it's not you know it's not going to engage um it's just going to go you know free will so i had to change the camshift holder i had to turn it around when in actual fact i made a new one so i made a new camshift holder i had to do it all in reverse so the pull come out the other way and then I had to sort of dremel the second gear where the spigot was so it was a, a flat edge so the pull could engage on it and then I built it up behind with a little bit of epoxy resin so as it come round it would engage on that and it would change gear well I put it on my stand and I kept fiddling about you know you've got a tiny little uh, screw with a spring on it so you can change the shift timing well I kept doing that and messing about and messing about and all of a sudden I did it on the stand and it changed gear as crisp as you like so I couldn't wait to take it out and try it so I took it out on a Sunday uh, with a few mates of mine and do you think it would change gear I tried it with the the screw right in and I'm gradually screwing it out and you know I just could not really get it to to work so I was thinking um, it, it's almost like it's stuck in second gear and it's not actually getting into first so I managed to lean the engine a little bit to get a bit more zip out the engine. Then I gradually screwed the screw in just a tiny little bit at a time. It's so minimal. It's probably like a sixteenth of a, a turn. And then you take it up the road and I come back. And then all of a sudden I could hear it kind of trying to change gear. It was like trying to go in, but then it was missing. Then it would go in and it was missing. So I screwed it in a little bit more and I leaned the engine out so I've got a few more revs out the engine and then it's changed as crisp as you like. It sounds absolutely fantastic. And it, in first gear, it would actually lift the front wheel. I mean, if a little four stroke, you know, it's fantastic. I know I've tried to make this bike as light as possible, but you see daylight under that front wheel, it comes up about half an inch and then it'll change in a second and off she goes. And the brakes are fantastic and it's lovely. So I thought, right, Last last week, I thought to myself, right, I'm going to get some video of it. So I went over with another mate of mine who's pretty good, you know. And I think what happened was, I accidentally, when I filled it, I flooded the engine. I mean, I normally put the engine at the top dead centre, stand it on its end, and I filled it up. And I think I must have, um, well, I don't know, I must have overfilled it because I went to style it, and it hydraulic, it must have locked, hydraulic locks and it spun the flywheel off and i thought well that's all right do it up but when i further inspection it actually cracked and broken the spigot shaft of the clutch which i made now obviously even though i hardened it uh, and i put it in oil you know so it's not too brittle it's not like going in water somehow it, it sort of just shattered so that was the end of play so this week again tomorrow i'm hoping to get some video of it running and hopefully the gear change is going to behave itself um you know and that's going to be okay because it's one awesome thing to drive but you hear that change gear two plumes of smoke out of it and it's quicker than my old one and the acceleration on it is fantastic you know i mean this little engine is half a horsepower uh, you know it's supposed to rev to eighteen thousand, but i know if you get them on a good pipe um, which is a straight pipe out of there, um, you know, you can get nearly 20,000 on them, which I've been told, and the, this one's revving pretty clean. The only thing I've got, I think, a problem with it is the tank. It's got a clunk in the tank, and it only runs for a little while, and then it starts misfiring and cutting out on me. And I think the tank is so small, it, it, it's a tiny tank in it, you know, and I'm thinking, 
maybe I can make a bigger one. Just make, um, it needs like a little sump in the tank, so all the fuel drains into that. I think when the bike leans, the clunk doesn't go over quick enough, and because it's, but if I show you it, it's like a, a clunk tank on it, a wedge shape, which is not really, I don't think it's any good in the bike. Like the Novo Ferrar always had like a, a normal tank and a, a pickup. Let's get the tank off. Right, now, if you can see, see the tank of that, it's very, very small. And you've got a clunk, I don't know if you can see, a, uh, see the clunk in there, moving around, and I don't think that picks up the fuel. I think when it gets low, it's only got to get down the halfway or whatever, and it's so narrow there, it's not picking up the fuel. So that's something I've got to look to, you, you know, that what I've got to look at, but... You know, I've got the air filter on there. Where are I? The air filter on there, which works a treat. Um, the carburetor, perfect, you know. You kind of have to lean the bottom end out to, you know, and that's ninny. It's got to be really, very really lean on the bottom um, to get it to change gear when it pulls away, because it changes gear quite quick. And also, you've got to run it quite lean on the top. But we put a temp gun on it, and it's not running excessively hot, so I'm not going to put a fan on it just yet. The other thing, um, it had like quite a bit of head shake. So I've gone back to using the old spring setup, which I like because you can change it so easy at the settings of the bike. And I actually took the springs out of the standard one and put some light oil in it. And I've just gone out to the other side there and it's cured it perfectly. There's no head shake whatsoever. It handles absolutely brilliant. Um, Suspension works all nice, everything. Oh, I've made a, a another bracket where I this this had uh, I think it was a 700 NICAD in it, and it had a great big bracket and it was a big NICAD and it was in the way of everything. So I've made a smaller bracket and I've got a 900 uh, metal hard drive battery in there. Um, as you can see, it's all you know, it's all lovely and smooth, everything works nice, um, and I'm really pleased with it. I'm just hoping that this week you know, we get um, a bit of good weather and I don't have anything go wrong with it again because, you know, it's a, it is a it is a great thing to drive. I love driving it. Um, the second gear just adds another sort of dimension to the model and, you know, it sounds, it's not noisy. Um, it just sounds really spot on, you know, and to see that pull that front wheel in the air when you, you, you know, you're driving away is really good. Um, even the back brake, you know, is, it works quite well. It's only got sort of like um, like gasket paper for brake pads. It's not fantastic, but you know, it's it's not too bad. Now, these are the crash bars I've been using. They come with it, and you know, to be honest, they're quite good. And you know, I know I'm old fashioned, but I quite like wire uh, crash bars because you don't see them. You know, when they're on there, they just sort of disappear, especially being black as well. And, uh, you know, I do run the big nylon bars on it and on other bikes and stuff like that. So, but I didn't really want to put them on here. So I'm going to look into making some kind of fixture or jig to make up some of these. I mean, they're only piano wire. I don't even know what the thickness of them is, but it looks quite thick. 2.5, 3 mil, something like that. But that's the next, next thing to make some of them. Because I don't really want to ruin the look of the model. You know what I mean? This should look quite nice because I've got the new body, I've got the original stickers and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to try and make a good job of it. Now you may have noticed I was looking for a rider because I can't stand that rider that comes with this model. I don't know if you've seen it. But it's um, a rider they put on all their models from the year dot. You know, it was... Um, it sort of looked like he was bent over the bike, not actually sitting on it or racing it. It was a horrendous looking thing. Um, and I've got a few of them and they're heavy and I just don't like them. So I was talking to, to Gregor, I asked him if he had any sort of riders from Motor Rad Shop. Um, and he said, why don't you use an Anderson? You know, because they're quite light and foamy. Now this Anderson is actually off my motor race bike, which is a really nice bit of kit. You know, it's a sort of gentleman's racer. It does everything sort of like nice and steady, but it's fast. Hardly ever crashes and it's smooth as you like to drive. It's a really nice bike. Now, 
I'll just sort of put this rider on it to see how it fits, you know. And to be honest with you, I think it, you know, it looks quite, quite good. I mean, I was... It's a nice rider, and there's not a lot of weight there. If I can just line these holes up, that's it. And it kind of fits on there. You know, it, it fits on there quite well, and it actually looks like it's sort of racing, rather than actually uh, sort of being bent over the bike. So, Greg's got a few left. Um, and he's sending me the Dugatti, well, the red one. Not say Dugatti, but he's sending me the red rider. So, it should look quite good on these bikes. So the you know the body's going to be red and black with all the Alice decals and God knows what else on it, and I should have a nice rider to go on it with the handlebars as well. It looks quite trick. So that's some another hurdle because I didn't know what rider to put on it. Um, I didn't want a Lexian one. I've, I've got a few of those, but that, that that sort of it's good and it's a very hard wearing body. You know, I've got uh, was it the little Venoms? I've got a couple of little Venoms with them on, and they seem to last forever. So that's where I'm at the moment, guys. Um, oh, just one other thing while I'm here. I made up these little uh, body mounts here. I made, made them out of nylon. Now this is where some manufacturers of kits go wrong because every one of the standard body mounts actually broke with no reason. That, you know, one of them broke just putting the body on and the other one when it slid down the road, a little knock or whatever, you know, things like this, all you've got to do is make them out of nylon and it will last forever. I remember when the, the Venom, the GPV, come out, you know, lovely little bike, handled lovely, but as soon as it fell over, it would destroy half the plastic on it, you know, and the frames and things like that, and it got such a bad name that it kind of got discontinued straight away. You know, if it had the right components on it, because I've got one with a sort of modified, and it's a fantastic little thing to run, you know, it, it handles really well, you know, and I'm, you know... That's a lovely little bike, and it, it's just a few little mods like the carbon frame, you know, because the original ones, the crash bar mounts used to snap out the frame and things like that. But, you know, when a kit like this comes with these, you know, made out of like some brittle plastic for a body mount, it, it, it's, it's such a shame, you know, why people do that. But, you know, and to say, the body is not as, you know, greatest. The quality of this has had a few, you know, you can see there's a lot another moulding line. Can you see it going down there? I don't know what's happened with that, but you know, like I say, it's going to be painted, so it's well, not too bad. I'm just lucky to be able to get one, you know. So anyway, guys, I'm going to sign off now. Hopefully, you're all keeping well. Uh, it's kind of eased up a bit out here, but now we've got to wear masks and go in shops and stuff like that. But you know, I can, at least I can get out now and have a little play and practice. Uh, pubs are open. Uh, I went in one last week, went out on my triumph up to see my mates up at the pub. Yeah, it was quite a laugh. But today it's raining, so I thought I'd sit here and just do a little video and let you know where I am, because some of you are probably wondering, you know, how, how it's going on. And, you know, I've got the Traxxas boat as well, which, you know, I need to have a look at as well. But hopefully tomorrow I can get out and get some video of this work and I'll show you guys how she goes. So I'm going to sign off now. So all look after yourself, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.